To conclude our chapter on layout and camera, I just want to briefly look at aspect ratio. That's the shape of the rendering. It's the ratio of the width divided by the height of any image. And we've got an aspect ratio here just inherent in the scene. We can change that though. Let's go up to the render settings dialog. Unlike with a real camera, the aspect ratio is not determined by the camera. In 3D, the aspect ratio is determined by the properties of the renderer. Let's go up into the render settings dialog. Render setup is a little teapot with a gear. Click on that and there's a ton of stuff in here, including what type of renderer you're going to use and what parameters it has. We'll go over some of this stuff later. The main thing we wanna look at is the output size here. And in my scene, I've got some custom values that I previously entered in. When we change the resolution, implicitly we're going to change the aspect ratio. We see the aspect ratio listed here. I've got an image aspect of 1.777. That's a high definition television aspect ratio or 16 by nine aspect ratio. If I click on some of these other buttons here, we'll get different aspects. If I click on 640 by 480, now we have an image aspect ratio of 1.333 or a four to three aspect ratio. And we see different cropping here in our camera view. Now, the other thing to keep in mind here is pixel aspect. That's less and less of an issue nowadays, but especially dealing with certain video formats, you may have non-square pixels. For example, DVDs have non-square pixels. I'm choosing to render all of my stuff to square pixels. That means the pixel aspect is going to be one at all times. You'll see there are also some locks here. If we want to lock the aspect ratio, that's useful if you want to just scale the overall resolution up or down without changing the image aspect. If that lock is off, then we could change one of the parameters of width and height, and then the other would not change. If it's on, then they will sort of move in tandem. When I change one, the other will change to maintain that image aspect. If it's off, I can, for example, change my width to something wider, like 720, press enter, and now it's wider and I've got an image aspect of 1.5. That would correspond to, for example, a 35 millimeter slide film aspect. I'll set that back to 640 by 480. And again, if I turn the lock on and then I change one of these values, the other will update automatically. If I set the width to 720 and press enter, the height has changed to maintain that aspect and we see no effect here because all we've done is say, we want it to render at higher resolution, but we want the relationship between the width and height to remain constant. Okay, so I'm gonna switch this back to what I had, which was actually a pseudo HDTV aspect. I'm gonna turn this lock back off again. I'll set this to 853 by 480. And that's giving me an aspect of 1.777 or 16 by nine, although that's not actually a television standard. I'm just using that in order to render out images at draft quality. And then if I wanted to later on, I could bump that resolution up. In fact, there are actually some presets already. I could go into the output size pull-down list that says custom, click on that, and I could choose HDTV, and then there are a bunch of presets in here. I could click on 1920 by 1080 or whatever I want, and that would be my render resolution. But again, for the purposes of test renders, I don't want to render out to a full 1080. I'll go back up to my custom and keep that at 853 by 480. All right, that's how we work with aspect ratio. It's a function of the resolution of the image. And those are the essentials of layout and camera.